So welcome. Today we're going to be talking about linear regression. Uh, honestly, I, I didn't necessarily think we would have a webinar this week. We had a great webinar last week. We're very happy with that and, and uh, really appreciate a lot of great feedback that we got from that. Um, that is on YouTube now, if you, you, you may already be aware of that, but so that's available for you. Um, but this week, I got some feedback from one of our users that they, you know, felt like some of the things with the linear regression were missing and that it was maybe a little too cumbersome to add the equation for the line and add some of the goodness of fit statistics. So we spent a bit of time thinking about that and, and actually have been working on a tutorial that really starts with the basics and shows you step-by-step step how to do linear regression, how to get some of the goodness of fit data and also shows you just what data graph has. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do today to start, will, is just to basically walk you through this tutorial and, uh, and get your feedback and talk about some of the things that may be missing for you or may not be missing for you. Maybe what we have is just fine. Um, and, and I guess just to just to kind of lay out one of the issues is whether or not to provide p-values. We up until now have not done that. Um, you can calculate them. There's a function within Datagraph that allows you to calculate p-values. Um, but for the moment, we just have the r-square value uh, as well as the, um, uh, the RMSE, the root mean square error. So we'll talk a little bit about what those are. Um, again, if you're very new to the program, I'm gonna start with some real basics. So I think that this should be something that you can, can easily keep up with. And I posted on the chat a link to the IRIS data set that you can get online. And that's what I'm going to uh, use for a good portion of this. I also have another example, depending on time, uh, that we'll go ahead and, and go over. But first, let me just show you, actually, I've been playing a little with the presentation functionality within Datagraph. So let me, I'd like to try and share the screen. And here we go. So let me just check with you and see if folks can see my presentation window now with the regression on there. Great, okay. Had some issues last week with my, with my monitor, not always sharing. So I'm sharing now from my main uh, laptop that I'm using. And what you're seeing is a linear regression using the IRIS data set. This is a data set that is um, certainly very well known. It's used all the time for various demonstrations of statistical analyses. And we've had a couple of users recommend, um, uh, oh, reposted. Okay, someone was just saying they just got on and they can't get the actual link to this data. So let me repost that. Okay, so here's a link, and I'm I, I'm going to show you how I get this into Datagraph. So we will we'll walk through this, but but just to see this for now, um, this is a data set that has uh, four columns of data, and we can plot them and do the regressions that you see here. And this is another version. I'll go through how I created this. Um, here you can see the data with the confidence intervals and. Uh, finally, this is a version that we did yesterday where we superimposed the, or have a background of an image of an iris. And all of this is done within Datagraph and this is not hard to do. So I thought this was sort of just a fun way to, to display this data. So let's go ahead and start with a new file. And actually, I guess what I should do is just show you, just so you can see what's happening. I'm going to unshare for a moment. So let me, or I think I can just switch to sharing the whole, my entire desktop. Okay, and if you're not seeing my entire desktop, then please let me know. Uh, so, so right now you're seeing this, you should be seeing the presentation window on the whole screen. And this is a, presentation window that's created from Datagraph. If I 
close this and now let me bring the actual file in. So can you see my, my entire data graph file here? Oops, this is sort of moving around in a strange way. Okay, great. For some reason it doesn't want to let me bring this onto here. Okay, there we go. So this is the file that I was just showing you these graphs from, where from within data graph, I can do a view presentation present in window, and then it has that separate window pop up that I can then share that through Zoom and just show you those individual images. This is one of the newer functionalities within the program that we created because so many people are on Zoom. So for, for now, uh, since I'm doing a demo of the program, I'll just show you the rest of my program. Oh, so someone can only see the presentation window. I'm gonna stop and reshare just to make sure that this is gonna work. Because there is something a little funny here about how it's moving my file back and forth. Fingers crossed that this is not going to continue to be an issue. Here we go. So I reshared the screen. And hopefully now, um, can people now see, are you still only seeing the presentation window? Or are you seeing my full screen? Still the same, okay. Screen is all black for me. Oh, goodness. Okay, I'm just gonna worked before now black. Let me stop sharing. Okay, we're gonna keep our fingers crossed that this is going to work just fine. Let me actually move the, uh, the program to my share. Here we go. As many times as I've done this, you'd think that it would just be working. And how about now? Nada, oh goodness. Oh, you know, I think Okay, I think I know what's happening. Sorry about this, guys. This we, we sort of had, it is a dual screen, but this is what Zoom is supposed to, supposed to let me do. Um, let me stop sharing again. And I think what is going on is that I need to pull Zoom over to here. And I'm going to move everything from Zoom here. I was maybe trying to be a little too fancy by doing that presentation mode. Let's see, I'm sharing. Okay, so how about now? Okay, yeah, they do make, someone said, they, every time you get comfortable with this, they make upgrades. Okay, so now you can see what you should be seeing. You can see the example files, great. All right, let's go ahead and then get started with a with this, this example that I want to do here. And I'm going to bring my, um, my uh, web browser up on the screen. So hopefully you can see that and that's still all working fine. So the, the link that I sent to you or the, the link that I posted online is, um, is, is from this website. This is again, where we have the, a, a, this is a website that has, um, whoever put this together, I should thank them. They did a very nice job with all the various R data sets that are here. Um, so for what, what we're going to look for, I actually sent you a direct link to the iris data set but if you're on the main page then you can search on this and you'll see there are actually two links to two different versions of the file 
we're going to take the version of the file that has the data in what we tend to refer to as the flattened format, where the, the, you have less columns, but more rows of data. If I go there to the CSV uh, on Safari, this just, you can download it, but this just um, my default anyway, is set up to just show me the data. To bring this into data graph, an easy way to do it is just command A to copy everything or to, sorry, select everything, command C to copy it to my clipboard. Now I'm gonna go over to data graph. I'll create a new document and go ahead and paste that in. Um, so hopefully now you see the data that I just pasted in. I have a new data graph file here. And a couple of things that I like to do before actually working with the data, when I get these, these R data sets, you'll notice that the, the, these data sets tend to have a row counter built in, a column that just shows you what row you're in. Datagraph has that built in already. So I click that and I hit the delete key. And, uh, and now I just see these four columns of data and then the species of iris. So uh, just very quickly, the, 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 this is sepal length and petal length, the petals being the the inside the iris, the colorful petals and the sepals are the, um, the, the green leaves that are around the outside of the iris. At least that's my understanding from, from Googling and, uh, and, and you know, looking at some, some images. So uh, I tend to also like to have my categories on the left-hand side. So you can just drag directly from the data table to put the column that has the, um, the species of iris. The other thing that I find convenient here that, that you might want to do is to add some dividers. And you can do that from the, this other drop down menu here to the left. There's a vertical column divider. If you click that, then you'll see this uh, column in between. And you also see it here represented in the, the list view on the left hand side. This is some, an object that you can also copy. So I'm going to go into actually clone this by doing option drag. Then I have another divider. So I have my sepal data and I have my, my petal data. And these columns are length versus width for each of these. A really quick way to view this data and get a sense of what it is, is to use the space bar. This is what we refer to as the quick graph functionality. And, and this is the first thing that I want to demonstrate for you before we even start creating our graph because it's such a great way to explore data. And I found that not everyone is aware that this is even within data graph. I've highlighted my one column, I click the space bar and I immediately get a histogram of all of the data in that column, really, really handy. Um, you also see summary statistics that are over on the side here. And, uh, and anyone who's just not familiar with using histograms, the, you're seeing on the x-axis the range of the data. And, and what the program is doing is it's creating bins for various, uh, for creating, a, dividing up the range and counting how many uh, instances of the data is within that range. So here you can see, for example, for SEPA length, this appears to be fairly normally distributed. If I want to then look at the other columns of data that I have, I, can, I don't need to close this and reopen it. I can just click on another column header and this changes now to the SEPA width. Again, pretty normally distributed. I can also um, select more than one column at a time. So if I do that, I get a very quick linear regression showing me the R square value, the slope and the intercept. So what the way that I did that was I held down the command key to select more than one column. And, uh, and if I go back and just click on a single column again, it goes back to the histogram view. If I click on command, or hold down the command key and click the pedal width, again, now I get a quick linear regression of that data. So a really, really handle way, handy way to get a quick overview of the data. And don't wanna forget this, if you have uh, 
up to four numerical columns, you can actually highlight all of them. Oops, I click the option key instead of the command key. If I click all four of these, look what I get. So you see now a uh, kind of a matrix of all these regressions. And uh, I have the x-axis labeled here with, with each of my variables. The y-axis also has each of my variables. And over here to the right, you have a histogram, a sideways histogram for the, the data that's here on the y-axis. And again, you can see here's the sepal length, sepal width. Um, yeah, I already see some people who did not know that this was there. So this is a, it's really a, a, a very, very handy tool. So we can see these, again, these somewhat normal distributions. You can see these clusters here. And the, the two regressions that we're going to focus on are the, um, are the petal length versus petal width that you see here, which is, again, a fairly uh, appears to be that there's some clustering, but it's pretty linear and um, sepal length versus sepal width here, which does not appear to have a very strong relationship. And I see overwhelmingly people on the chat indicating that they've never known that this was there. So it's a, a small section that's in the manual and clearly has not gotten enough attention because I think it's, it really is a very useful tool. And we've, we've even thought about kind of expanding this out to do some other things here uh, where maybe you could just pick different types of graphs. But for now, this is what the quick graph does. And um, yeah, a couple of, let's see, one comment. How would this handle categorical variables? For now, this is just individual um, numeric variables, just doing a simple linear regression, at least for the, for the quick graph. And I see that my, my camera has gotten completely, we'll try this one more time. Let's see if this works. Close it, open it again. Nope, I'm completely blurry. Not that you necessarily need to, need to see me. Whoops, sorry about that. I'm gonna try and turn my camera off and on again and see if that, see if that helps. Um, yeah, the, the quick graph only, so some questions about categorical variables. If you select, oh, now I'm, now I'm back in view. If you select a, um, a text variable, for example, let's, um, let's say I, I select species and I hit the space bar, you don't see anything. We don't have that set up yet. Um, we've been talking about having something like this where it would show you just a simple count of each category and the categories you have present. That's something that we could add. Um, but at, at this point, we don't have that. And this is just, for, the quick graph is just going to select the entire column of data. I'll show you how in the regression, when we actually start making these graphs, then you can use a mask to select specific types of the data that you could use. Um, so anyway, so, so yeah, very, very handy functionality does not work yet for, uh, categorical variables or text variables, but that's something that we can definitely, definitely think about adding for, in terms of the quick graph. So let's start next by actually doing some, making some plots that we will keep around. And very quickly, the uh, really quick way to do this is again to select both of my columns. So you can either use shift or, or hold down the command key to, to, to select your two columns. Um, similar to the, the way spreadsheets work, we assume that the x-axis is the left, the y-axis is the right. And so if I select these two columns and I then click points, I can see my, my points for that data. And, and so I just clicked the, the shortcut here in the toolbar. The fit command to shortcut, I can also just click that once and notice that the line was added. Let me go ahead and actually uh, make this a little bit thicker so that maybe this is easier to see. So notice what I tend to do here is instead of, instead of changing the line width with the slider, which is pretty cool. Uh, don't get me wrong, wrong. I, I do like to, <laughs> it's fun sort of using that. 
Um, but if you, if you just add an increment relative to the pen variable, that's local to every graph. So here I just, by default, it's set to pen, which is this local variable up at the top that I can use to change all the lines in my graph. But if I, um, what I tend to do is just set to say an increment of that. So if I decide I need everything just a little thicker or a little thinner, I can do that without having to um, change ev uh, everything is still connected. Anyway, okay. So here I have my um, my regression, and I've created this very easily, right? I just selected my data. I clicked points. I clicked fit. Uh, you'll notice that the two commands for anyone who's who's new to the program, these are the two commands that we created, and the uh, each of them have the x and y selectors automatically populated by pre selecting the data within the column. And the fit command is designed to be to have some uh, logic in terms of when we have a points command already on our graph, if we add a fit, it will automatically just fit that data. And if we have multiple points command, actually, you can fit, hit the fit command multiple times and it will, uh, it, it will just fit each one uh, incrementally. So anyway, that well, I'm not. Gonna, I don't know if I'll do that so much in this webinar, but something maybe that you can that you can play with. So now that we have just this basic graph, we want to add some titles to this. And again, I'm doing this all from scratch so that you help to help you make sure that you understand how to do this and you can create your own templates. Uh, I guess I should say before going on too far, there's a bunch of linear regression templates within the example files. Um, and, 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 and I think the more you see this, the more you'll understand how those are created and you can use them. In any case, let's go ahead and add our X and Y labels. Here in the axis settings, you can type them, but I'm going to use a token for this. I'm going to click this little plus here next to the text bar and we'll use the the points command. So each of my commands here are selected, are, are possible to select, and it will show me a list of um, different labels that I could include. I'll select the X label. I'll do the same thing here for sepal width and select the Y label. Now you'll see the um, X and Y label being shown and the fact that if I changed my name here or I pasted in different data, these um, labels would change. So I'll just type in X just to illustrate that would change what my label is. And again, hopefully everyone can sort of see this. I'll make the font maybe a little bit bigger to make sure that this is, that this is visible for you. Um, and uh, let's see, in fact, why don't I, I'll close my list view and I can swap my data with my commands so that maybe this will be, can make this even a little bit bigger there. Now, uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'll show you how to create a title for this. And um, one of the things that is useful is that when you add these tokens, you can actually reuse them. This may be, again, another thing that you might not be aware of. So you'll see that there are these, these tokens are these sort of blue pills. I'm in dark mode right now. So these are, these are sort of a darker color, but in, in, um, in light mode, there are these light blue pill looking um, uh, objects that are within the text field. And now that I've added this Y label, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to show the equation. So I can just take this token and drag it and you'll see the little plus symbol indicating that I'm about to basically make a clone of this. I'll drop that. And now that text label is shown within my, um, within my title. So these tokens are, again, they're things that once you create, you can drag them around and put them in other locations. The other thing that I want to do here is add my equation of my line. So I'm going to now combine some text with my token. And within any text bar, I can add a token. So here in my title bar, I also have this plus symbol that I can click. And now I'm going to add from add a token 
that's coming from the equation itself. So the, the, or from the fit. So the fit command calculates all these different things and I can use these for my labels. So the, here you'll see there's an option for showing the function, uh, but if you choose the display option that shows the function using the names of the columns coming from the data. If I therefore click display and hit enter, now you'll see sepal width and you see the equation for this line. And if I change this data, this is all gonna update. And you'll see that once I've created this once, I don't need to redo this again for my other graph. This will already be, be pre-done for me. And let's see, what is my next step on here? Sort of following this. Okay, so, so the next thing that I want to do is just to um, add a label that has my R square value. So to do that, I'm going to use a custom text label. I'll click the text icon that creates another object here in my list. Again, it has this text bar. You can see it here. If I um, delete what's there now, I'm going to actually use the R square. So I can type in R squared like that and notice it formats it properly and click on this plus symbol go here, select R square, and there it is. Now these text labels are things that are, they, they are not located in the XY coordinate system. Uh, they're located within the, the pixeled, um, pixels of my graph. So they're anchored to a certain point by default anchored to the upper left. And there's also an offset, which by default here is zero, zero. I can just drag this around if I want to move this a little bit and have it a little bit further away from the corner that's changing the offset here. You can also type in an exact value, but obviously it's pretty easy to just drag it and move it. And as these tokens are created, you don't always have to go back to the command to edit it. I can double click any of these and it gives me a, uh, access to the same bar that's here within this. So if I typed in, I don't know, I'll just type anything, then you'll see that within my label, or I can just delete that. Okay. Now, uh, now we have our regression. We've, you know, even though this is, you know, in terms of, I guess, the Zoom uh, time, this is, this has taken a little bit of time to pull this together, but really you can do this, once you know how to do this, you just do it in a few minutes. It doesn't take long at all. And now that I have created a format that I like, uh, then I'm going to just reuse this for a new set of data pretty easily. And the way to do that would be to clone this graph. And uh, the word cl clone for files and data is not something I was really used to uh, until I started using the Mac. Um, Cloning is just basically making a copy without having it go to the clipboard first. So you can do in one step, you, you make the copy, um, copying instead of copying and pasting, you just make the clone of it. And to clone the graph that we have selected, you can go under the file menu and there is an option for new graph, clone current graph, but there's a, also a shortcut on the thumbnail if I hover over this and on the uh, bottom left corner, you'll see the, the two rectangles overlapping each other. If you click that, it makes a clone of the graph. That's pretty easy. The next thing that I wanna do is update the data that I have here with my X and my Y to now plot a pedal length versus pedal width. So to do that, I can just click the, the title bar itself and drag it and drop it onto my X selection. I'll do that for my points. I'll do the same thing for the X and the Y. So now I've updated the points that are being displayed, but I also need to update the actual regression. So once these are created, they are independent objects, even though the, the fit command was smart about knowing to, um, when it was created, it looked at what what points command were there to know what data to select. So I didn't have to do it. But now that I'm changing the data, I'm just going to, again, update each one. Now, another really handy thing to do is that 
once I have updated my, uh, my points command, I don't have to drag again all the way from my data. You can keep your focus here within the columns themselves and hold the command key down, click on one of these objects. And if you drag it and drop it, you update the data. So I just updated the X values for the fit command. Now I can update the Y values. So I'm going to do that again in case you didn't see that because this is something that I use all the time within data graph and it makes it so handy to do this. And yeah, I see again, not, didn't know that that trick was there either. There's actually a lot of uh, drag and drop functionality that's um, really throughout the program that's meant to make all these sorts of things very easy so that when you create a particular command or graph, uh, you know, to make that updating of the data as, as fast as possible. So again, I'm going to hold the command key, click on this menu selector and drag it and drop it on this other menu selector. I'll do the same thing with the Y, click, drag and drop. Um, so you do have to hold down the command key. You know, notice if I just click on it, it's going to open the menu itself, which you certainly could have done that to update the data too. It's, there's not that much data in this file, so that would have also been pretty quick. But if you have a number of different groups and you have a file that has a lot of data, then it might take a little uh, effort to navigate to a particular selection. So if you already have a column selected within the group of data you're interested in, then again, it's very handy to use this, this trick. Okay, so, and notice that now that I did that, all of my data is updated. The R squared has updated, the data updated, the equation that's been displayed is updated. So I can, again, create my, create a graph in the way that I would like to, it to be seen with the information that I want to show and very quickly update the data to show that. Okay, so let me, Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to show you how to add more information into this text label and to talk a little bit more about some of the other uh, parameters that we can use to, um, to evaluate the, the, the uh, fit that we just did. So first of all, when you have a fit command, we can um, open this up and, um, and you'll see the, uh, the fit parameters that you see here. And I know there's a question about, could you do this again for categories? Um, you know, I have to think a little bit about the, the best way to do that. For categories really are text, uh, they, they are, you know, text values that can't be used within, the, for example, if you look at, um, and this is a question, I'm not sure if anyone can see this other than me, because this is to panelists, but asking about how would you do this for categories. If you click on here and look at the species column, then it is, um, it shows as red because it's a text column. It doesn't even, doesn't have a numeric representation. And to be included in, the, in, a, in any of these commands, a column has to have a numeric representation. Uh, you can go into any text column and give it a numeric representation. So for example, if I go into this column, this is a little bit of a, of, of a, of a tangent, but I think it's worth just kind of pointing out that I can, I can edit this, ed edit any text column to map it to a numeric value that, so I could use it in these types of um, these these types of regression. So to do that, I would just double click here. Whoops, double click. Not on, actually, if you double click on the text, it will let you edit the name. But if you double click uh, further away from the text, it will open up the column view, have that column selected. And if you expand any of these text columns, you'll see that there is a, um, an ability to, uh, uh, what's our, to an option really of 
having a mapped value of the text to a number value. Uh, if you wanted to have it be the row value, you could do that, but you can also have a unique number for every text option that's there. So if I say either the, the sorted number, that would be alphabetical. So now let's just look quickly at my text column and I can change it to display the number that's being mapped to that. So now here, for example, you can see, actually I can hit my space bar now. Maybe that's not working. I have to double check that. Um, I thought that would work that on that. I'll have to jump. I guess it still considers it a text. So it should know that, that that's a number in terms of that. But you can see that there's three different categories here. And, um, and now if you looked at the drop down menus, now you could select species as one of the options to plot. So if I did a new graph and I had for example, species versus the width, and I clicked points and I clicked fit, you would then see that, see that graph and the, the, it, now it's giving you a regression based on that. Now that really, I, I'm not sure that's exactly what you're really looking for here, um, but I guess I just wanted to show you how you map between the two. I think what I'm really gonna have to do is is we might need to do another webinar specific to um, the best way to do a categorical type of regression within, within data graph. So anyway, that was a little bit of a tangent, but let's, um, let me continue. And, and so, so here what we have is the uh, expanded fit command where you can see um, all of the parameters that this command is calculating are shown in a table here, and you see the uh, best fit equation. And uh, so you can go into here, you can look at the R square, you can look at the RMSE, the sample size. And what we also calculate is the standard error for each of the variables within the linear fit, the, the slope, standard error for the slope, same with the intercept. We also calculate the x-intercept, and, um, but again, we, we, this is maybe not as complete as if you were doing the regression in R or SAS, where you would get the confidence intervals and the p-values. And uh, again, we have a file that shows you how to do that, but let me just, um, what I really wanna do is I wanna show you again, a little bit more about displaying some of this other information that you have here that shows you more about the goodness of fit of this parameter. So if to do this, I can go, for example, into this text command that I've already created. And if I want to have more than one line for this uh, display, you can go to the bottom of the text command and there's a plus symbol here that you can use. And I'll click to add a couple of lines here. And this is a, is a display that you can move things around in. So, this again, a lot of drag and drop functionality. And if I want to, for example, show my slope, I can type that in and go to, again, go to the plus to get that menu. Now you can see my slope. What I tend to do is to put the standard error in parentheses beside the value. And then you can see um, both of them here. And again, I'm creating this the way that I want to see it, uh, but you, uh, you may want to show things a different way. I'm going to show you some other options. Uh, but okay, so let me do the intercept and I'll show you that. Let's see, where are we? Here we go. And Show the same thing here. So it takes a little time to, to do this, but I'm only gonna have to do this once for this particular, um, to create this setup. And these can be, you can, uh, you know, again, reuse it. And I'm gonna show you how to, how I can actually reuse this pretty easily between these, between these graphs. So uh, maybe I also want to just have a space in between and then I, again, I have my RM, RMSE 
and I can go here and add that. Okay, so I think you get the point. I can add, do the same thing to add the, the value for the, um, for the number of samples that are here. And again, this would change when I change my data. So a couple of things that are also handy, I think, to realize about this, this command in general is that you can change the way things are aligned. If I wanted, instead of having everything aligned to the left, there's this option for aligned block that I can align it based on the equal symbol. And then you see what that looks like here. So I don't, I, I, for me personally, for this data, I kind of prefer it aligned to the left, but uh, definitely depending on if you were doing maybe more complicated fit with a lot of parameters with a different, not just the linear fit, but um, say the arbitrary fit where you have a, a bunch of different parameters that are being optimized, then I think it can look really nice to have everything um, centered on the equal sign. So we'll go back to having this um, to the left. Again, I can drag and drop this and move this around. But what I wanted to show you was, well, what if I wanted to, again, reuse this somewhere else and notice how, again, on this graph, I don't have as, that information showing. But if I take this text command itself and drag it and drop it on the thumbnail of the first graph I created, then notice how now I see all that information here. And again, it is updated with the data for this graph. So I don't need to recreate that. Now that I've, I have this created in the format that I want, I can just um, drag that over to different fits to show that same information. And I'm going to um, hide the R score here and show you that value. Um, yeah, this, that's, another, uh, that's another really handy sort of tip to be able to use. Um, and, and again, you can do that throughout the program. If you have a command in one graph that you wanna to bring to another graph, you just can drag it and drop it onto the different thumbnails. And, uh, and the, the graphs here, again, because they're set up the same, it, it is able to reconnect to the fit command that's within that particular graph. So it will update all of this, the statistics associated with it. Now, I'm, one of the things that I wanted to, to show you is, um, oh, I didn't talk about uh, showing the confidence intervals, but uh, so let's, let, I'll, there's, and there's a question on, about the error bars. Let me uh, get to that in just a minute, uh, but let me show you one of the things that we uh, just did recently. So again, just sort of to illustrate, I can, I don't even have to if I want to graph now with just these two, I guess I could have cloned it, but now I've selected two commands. I'm going to drag them and drop them over here on this thumbnail. And, and what I'm going to do in addition is I'm going to add a legend command into this. So notice the legend command by default goes over to the right-hand side uh, for a nice linear fit. I definitely want this over into the left and I can drag this and expand this out if you are trying this yourself and you are using a uh, using the release version of the program, it's gonna do something slightly different. And this is something that we just changed this week, trying to think about how to make these things as easy as possible. So the, the way that it does it in the, in the release version is that the commands, when you have uh, the, the, the points command and the plot command and the fit command, they all work off of X and Y data. And when you have the same data plotted, it will overlap in the legend uh, to show that it's the same data. But here with the fit, uh, we think it's actually more appropriate not to collapse this into one uh, entry in the legend, but to actually show the equation of the line that's being fit. So this is something, again, this is new, this is in the beta, and it will be in the next release version. And hopefully you agree that this is the appropriate thing to do. I think this is a nice, nice improvement. So the, the effort that I went through here to show you how to add the, um, how to add the, the equation here, I think it's useful to know how to, again, manipulate these things yourself. But if I wanted to just start 
in, in from scratch in this version, again, if I take my, my data and I highlight it, and now I click points and I click fit and I click legend, I now have um, all of the, at least maybe not at all, I don't have, have the R square, but I have the, the, the data shown with the, uh, the best fit line shown very quickly. So that makes things, things easier. Um, the, so let me, let me, uh, there's a, there's a question that someone sent about how to add error bars to the data and how to consider or weigh these errors in the regression. Uh, so let's see. So first thing that I want to make sure that I do talk about, because I have not done this yet, is to show you how to add confidence intervals on the regression itself. And, uh, and that's pretty easy to do. If you go into any fit command, there is an option for bounds. If you take that and you can pick either the confidence or the prediction bounds. So where the confidence interval is showing us how well do we know that best fit line and the prediction interval is going to show us if we added more data, uh, what is the 90, fifth percent um, confidence interval where that data would belong to. If you want to add a fill to this, it's very easy to go ahead and there's a fill with option down at the bottom that I can add. Now notice my data is listed in my list of commands at the top. So that's drawn first. So right now my, my fill is actually covering my data. That's easy to deal with. I can just drag my regression up to the top, and now the data is drawn is drawn second. So the fill is drawn first, then the data. Um, also, you may want to add some transparency to this that sort of makes it look, look much nicer. Um, and again, this is easy now to change uh, between here. And, uh, and now one of the things though that that was another comment that we got was I, I can show the confidence interval and I can move it around very easily. I can change within the command itself, the confidence interval that you see, but it's not showing you the confidence interval on the graph. Um, and that is a little bit of an issue that we we're, we're thinking about actually whatever confidence interval you pick here also being something that you can display within the graph itself as one of these tokens so that you would always know which one that you've picked. For now, if this is something you wanna do, what I've been doing, which actually I think works pretty well, is to create a slider variable here where I can um, pick, I can, well, I, can make, I can call this whatever I would like it to be. And if I want this to go from say um, 50 to 99, oops, and this would be, I'm gonna make this as a fraction. So now I have this variable that I can put here within this um, numeric entry box. And now if I change it here, you'll see that the, uh, that the interval is changing. And because this is a, a variable, I can also put this as a label within my um, my graph itself. So I could just do, for example, a new text label and any variable that you see here will also be something that's listed when I try and add a new token. So here's this, let me move this to the upper right, for example, you can see the 99. So I could put this in various places. I put it here right now within my, just, just here within the, within the, um, the middle of the graph. So I can, I could put 99%. Um, let's see what I, I think I have now the confidence. Oops. Confidence. There we go. Um, or maybe I'll just make this short. Just do CI. There we go. Um, one of the things that's actually sort of interesting about these tokens is that you can do some very simple math with them. My variable here is a 0.99, uh, which is the, in the format that you'd need for entering it as, as something within the, um, that entry box. 
but I can say use function and I can actually multiply this by 100. And now it's showing it to me as 99%. That is something I actually just learned very recently, which uh, I think is, is pretty cool. And again, so to do that, you would click on the, the token itself. Uh, you, there's a function option, and then you would uh, be able to change that. So there's, there's a couple of questions on the, on the chat that I wanted to, to talk about and get to a little bit. One is, can you provide a link to the version of data graph that you're using? And that is actually, if you go onto our website um, and go to the downloads, uh, downloads page, I'm using the beta version. Um, and there, so there's a link on that downloads page. There's a link to both the main version and a link to the beta version. If you are an App Store user, you do have to register with us before you can use the beta. But if you have any problems with that, let us know. Sometimes it doesn't work the first time, but we always seem to get it worked out for everyone. Okay, so, so we've talked about the displaying the confidence intervals. Um, if you want to display the confidence interval and the prediction interval, that's also something that you can do pretty easily. You can't do it with a single command, but this is where you can layer two commands. So here, for example, I have my, my fit command that I've, um, sorry, added here. I can hold down the option key, drag this. It makes a clone of this command. And then if I expand this out, I can change the bounds here to prediction. And then you see both of them uh, on top of each other. So maybe I want to make this just a little bit more, um, not quite as dark as the other one. Another handy shortcut that I use all the time for this, I may not want to have, it's, it sort of doesn't look quite as neat to show the gap on the side. Uh, so if you want to just have everything expanded all the way out, there's a padding section, padding option that's within the, um, within the access settings, I believe, but you can access it very quickly by just right clicking on the axis. You'll see X padding as an option. So I did, on, at least on my, I'm using a two finger um, uh, click on the, on my touchpad, and I'm going to set X padding to none. And now that's expanding out to the full range of my, um, of my graph. Anyway, so that's a, that's a really, Handy, handy tip. Okay, so one of the, the couple of questions that I want to uh, get to. One was how can you show? Oh, how yeah, how can you show to add error bars in the data? And how does Data Graph consider or weight these errors in the regression? By default, um, the regression is is a uniform weighting. Every point has a uniform weight. There is a an option here if you actually want to. Uh, look within the fit command, there's, a, there's, there's three other options here in terms of changing things related to the, both the fit range, uh, where you can be fitting everything, or you can specify something differently. Actually, let me do that within this, this data. This might be a little more interesting. Um, so if I change my, my fit range, I can do that. Um, so for example, here, if I say specified, and, and, by, and what it's gonna show me is it's now negative infinity to infinity. So it, the fit range is everything. I can change that to have a lower value of three, for example. And now the fit is only showing the, uh, it's only doing the fit over that data. Uh, so that was easy to change, right? Without having to change any of our data. The display range is actually, uh, showing how wide the, how long the, the line is going. So if I want the line to go the full length of the graph, I can also change that to um, specify this to go to a further value. So if I wanted to go have this go out, I don't know, to eight, for example, and then again, I can remove that padding so that it will go all the full length of the graph. Okay, but the, the question about weighting, there's a weight option here that you can change and have things weighted based on a numeric column. You would have to have a column in your table that specifies 
what the weight is for that particular entry. And then it will apply the weight within the regression. Um, uh, so I guess it, it uh, that doesn't show you the actual. So if I had, for example, a uh, each row had some um, errors that were for particular points that you wanted to include, you would select the the weight column here, and then you would, if you wanted to also display the error bars, then you have you would display the error bars. Sorry, within the points command itself. So at the bottom of the points command there's an option for error style where you can go ahead and pick which, um, which type of error bar and then you would also pick that same column there. Um, uh, great, thank you. I know some, some people are, are heading out, so thank you for attending. The, um, the other thing here is to realize that you can apply masks here just like you do in any other command where you're plotting data. If, for example, if I wanted to pick a particular species to plot, I could say I want to use a mask based on the species. And then it's going to ask me, well, what species do you want? Now, by default, this is uh, just showing me a, a, a default entry. I have to actually pick that I want to say, I want to match this based on and maybe I'll do um, the first one here. And now you see that the fit is only based on the data for this particular species, Setosa. Another really cool thing I want to make sure I show you though before we um, before we end, and I am happy to stay a little bit for any other questions that, that people have, is to how I would color these points based on the species column, because this is, Again, another one of the things of data graph that I think is so great. So if I want, for example, the fill color of the points to change based on the species, if you've never done this before, you can go into the points command, select that you want it to vary based on that particular categorical column, and then it allows you to select a color scheme. You can create these color schemes from scratch, or since there's none that I've already created in this file, I'll say, create color scheme. And then sure enough, it creates what we refer to as this um, color scheme variable where we have uh, each point a different color. So I'm going to actually make my points a little bit bigger here. So hopefully you can see them. And then I can um, click on this uh, gear menu within the color scheme itself and select different colors if I would like to do that. So anyway, that's a really handy way to do that and then to show what the color scheme actually is, I would use a custom legend and I would then select the variable, I don't know how well you can see this, let me close this here. Within the color scheme, within the custom legend, you would select that color scheme variable. I didn't name it, so it doesn't show anything there, but now you can see what each of these are connected to. And I can we'll move this down to the, let's see, lower right. And again, now that I've created this, I can use this in all sorts of other places. So I don't have to recreate this. Even the, the, the legends themselves, can, I can drag and drop them um, between different values. And um, let's see, so I, so if you want to, I, I'm not sure, uh, Charles, if I'm answering your question exactly, but the, but for each, if you need a different regression for each um, entity, you know, that you're plotting, then you would create a different um, fit command for each one of those. So the so if I wanted to do a regression here based on each of these sets of data, then I would have another fit command for each one. And then I can change the mask for that particular um, fit to, uh, to be able to, to get that get the line for that data. Okay, so one question, how can you do the custom legend? Show me that again. Okay, absolutely. So let me just, um, I'll just hide the one that I've already created here. And that is under the command menu. 
you uh, filter down to the add custom legend option and, and expand this out. The custom legend actually allows you to do all sorts of different things with legends. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, I uh, suggest also going to the gear menu on this and clicking help to get the article that about the custom legend command. But one of the things you can add, you see how you have this add line is to select um, add variable. Actually, it's, oh, this is the one that I had already added. So this is maybe not helpful. Let's see, here's the brand new one that I created. Uh, so again, I could add variable and then I would select the color scheme variable to place that within my graph. Um, and you can add, I could also even add a, for example, one of the commands, I could say, show me the, um, let's see, the default entry for that command. And so you can see here how now I have a custom legend that shows me the colors and it also shows me the, the slope of that line. So we're, we're at an hour and, um, and I think I've covered most of what I wanted to cover. The one thing, however, that I really should make sure I wanted to show you is that if you go into the fit command itself, down at the bottom, there is a residuals plot that shows you some information about the residuals within this graph. So you have each of my points plotted. You can see the x-axis is what I see here, the same x-axis as as what you have within your graph, but the y-axis on this is the residual of the data. Now, all of these parameters that I've been talking about are things that I can get, um, I can extract variables for, so I, it, or as well as columns. If you wanna see the residual for this data, you can click on this gear menu, extract the column of the residuals, and then I see them here. Again, we can use our handy, um, uh, space bar trick. So I highlighted the column, click the space bar, and you can see that this plot of the residuals looks like a very normally distributed distribution, which is good. That's what we want for our for our, for our linear um, fits. You see the same preview here with the histogram, um, and there's some options here for for removing outliers. Uh, and there's actually there's a couple of videos that that 